video and sample preparation of recrystallization of a brass cartridge sample by Aliyah Yano, Jasmine Dibizer, Alex Crawley, and Hassan El Mousa, material science and engineering undergraduates at Arizona State University, better known as Beta Gamma Theta. The overview of this lab includes preparing samples molds, polishing grinding, chemical cleaning, chemical etching, optical microscopy images of grain boundaries. To begin this lab, we must first cut the breast cartridges into small pieces. We will be annealing two sets of samples. One set will be annealed for 30 minutes at 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800 degrees Celsius. There will also be one sample left at room temperature. The second set will be annealed at the recrystallization temperature at about 454 degrees Celsius for 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 60 minutes. After the annealing process, each sample will be tested for hardness using Vickers hardness testing. These values should be plotted but this is not paramount to the sample preparation steps. Sample mounting is the next step in the preparation process. For each annealed sample at recrystallization temperature, a reusable mold will be labeled for each sample temperature. Before placing the brass cartridges into the mold, a PTFE release spray need to be applied to the inside so the epoxy resin does not stick to the container. Once the container has its protective coating, the cartridge is placed face down and properly centered inside the mold. While preparing the reusable molds, the epoxy resin will be made by mixing a cold curing resin powder with a liquid cold curing resin in a small cup. The epoxy resin is formed and ready to use in the molds. Pour about half an inch or enough to cover the breast sample into each mold. Once each container is filled with the appropriate amount of epoxy, the molds are placed into a pressure chamber to harden the resin around the cartridge. The molds will stay in the pressure chamber for 6 minutes each, reaching around 30 psi. The molds will be hot when the time limit has been reached so let them cool before trying to take out the solid epoxy breast sample. It's important to keep each sample labeled correctly. After the mold has set we can begin the process of grinding and polishing the sample. The epoxy mounted sample will undergo a series of grinding and polishing with progressively finer grit. To begin, the 320 grit is used and the sample is polished until it is flat and the scratches are uniform in size and direction. Then the 600 grit will be used for about 2 to 3 minutes and the 1200 grit for 2 to 4 minutes after that. The 1200 grit can be substituted with a 6 micrometer diamond grit if needed. This is an example of sample set into the epoxy mold. We can see that it is not quite flat due to the reflectivity of one side in comparison to the other. This picture was taken after one of the lower grit grinding steps. You can clearly see the coarse scratches in the epoxy of the sample. The basic grinding process is shown in the video. Polishing will use much finer grit paper. To eliminate the coarse scratches, very fine 1 micrometer diamond polishing paper with green blue blue brickant instead of water must be used for 2 minutes. The final polishing step requires an even finer polishing cloth used in conjunction with colloidal silica for 1 to 2 minutes. It is important to note that at each step in the grinding processes the sample needs to be thoroughly cleaned. You should also be turning the sample 90 degrees for each grinding step to remove the previous scratches and ensure that scratches are dug deep into the sample. This can be monitored by checking the sample in the microscope between every grinding step. You also should keep your hands clean or use gloves to keep the oils and other contaminants on your hands from transferring to the samples. 
step in sample preparation involves chemically etching the sample in order to expose the grains. We will etch using a solution 25 milliliters distilled water, 25 milliliters ammonium hydroxide and 10 milliliters of 3% hydrogen peroxide. For brass you etch for 3 seconds, copper for 10 seconds, and bronze for 10 seconds. After this you will etch with CLEMS 3 reagent for color metallography. The stock solution is water saturated with Na2S2O3. We will be using 5 milliliters of the stock solution along with 45 milliliters distilled water and 20 grams K2S205. This will color the microstructure and allow for better distinction between grains. After all the preparation and cleaning of the sample, the final sample is observed under an optical microscope. The key features we are looking for as we observe the brass are grain boundaries, annealing twins, dirt or debris on the sample or lens, etched pits, scratches, and grains, making sure you keep the magnification in mind. On the next few slides, pictures from the lab are shown at different anneal times to show the difference in images. For example purposes, one image from each slide will be analyzed. The room temperature image at 200 times magnification on the top left of the slide appears to have scratches, poor resolution of the grain boundaries on the surface, and possible etching pits showing the sample was poorly prepared. The 40 minute anneal at 200 times magnification on the lower right side that the slide had distinct grains and grain boundaries with no scratches or debris on the sample or lens. The last of the imaging slides has a 60 minute annealed image at 200 magnification. This picture has grains, grain boundaries, and annealing twins clearly portrayed with one to two debris particles on the surface of the brass cartridge. Thank you all for watching our presentation on sample preparation. We hope you enjoyed it. Please share, like, comment and subscribe for more metallurgy videos like this to learn about the amazing world of metallurgy.